So here we are given a coil that is rotating with an angular velocity omega, like this. And the ends of the coils are connected to a galvanometer. Now these contacts are sliding, so even while the coil is turning, the ends of these two, these two ends are always connected to the galvanometer. The radius of the coil is given as small r and resistance is also given. So this is the setup when the coil is rotating. We need to find the specific charge of current carriers. If a sudden stoppage of the coil makes a charge Q flow through the galvanometer. So when this, this coil is suddenly stopped, it's noticed that Q charge flows through the galvanometer. And we need to find <coughs> the specific charge of current carriers that is the ratio e by m because current carriers are electrons so this is basically a, a, an experimental setup to know the value of specific charge so you take a coil you rotate it and when you suddenly stop you notice how much charge is passed through the galvanometer and then somehow we should be able to calculate what is the specific charge so how to calculate that so this is the initial setup of the experiment. Now when the coil is suddenly stopped, let's observe what happens. So here you will need to know the basics of electromagnetic induction. So I will not go into that because later in this chapter when you will read about electromagnetic induction and if you do certain problems of that, and then you will understand more clearly what we are talking about. But at this part of the chapter, at problem 206, it might be too early to do this problem. So when the coil is suddenly stopped, so all the atoms and the nucleus <coughs> will also suddenly stop, but the electrons still have their momentum. So the, these charge carriers, these electrons will still move with the velocity omega r. And all these electrons will move, whatever free electrons are there. So they still have their velocity omega r. So if electrons are turning in this way, so you can say that the current is turn, current is moving in the opposite way, right? So when it suddenly stopped, suddenly there is a current that appears in the clockwise direction, which means magnetic field inside the field starts to increase because of this sudden appearance of current. And when magnetic field appears and increases, that means flux inside the loop increases. See, initially, the atoms and electrons, both were rotating. So when both were rotating, there was no net charge that was rotating. So current was zero in the loop. And when current was zero, flux was also zero. Now when suddenly stopping, the electrons continue to move. So there is a current that is de developed in the opposite direction, which means magnetic field increases, which means flux increases. And when flux increases, we know that there will be an EMF induced in the loop that will oppose that change in flux. So if the magnetic field inside the plane is increasing, the EMF will be induced such that induced current will oppose this change. So that gives the direction of EMF induced as anticlockwise. So let's read that also once. So on sudden stop, electrons will continue to move, generating current I. Induced field ET will oppose this change in flux through the loop. So we are calling it as ET because that's not a fixed value. We don't know how this current is varying. But whatever that value of field is, that will be constant all through the loop because of the symmetry. Now what will happen because of this, this induced EMF? So you can see this is the direction of electric field. So from this point, the electric field's direction along the loop is always like this, tangential. So you can imagine that this point will be at highest potential because field lines are away from it. And this point will be at lowest potential because field lines are coming towards it. 
so let's call it vt and zero so vt is positive and we are assuming this to be zero so now these ends are connected to a galvanometer so you can imagine then current will start to flow through this galvanometer and let's say so everything we are talking at a time t so let's say at time t the current that's flowing through the galvanometer is it so this is the till now we have not discussed the solution we have just discussed what's happening right so i'll quickly summarize within a minute so initially the whole loop was turning so there was no current because the nucleus and electrons both were turning with the same velocity when we suddenly stopped electrons continued to move which means a current started to flow in opposite direction current means increase in magnetic field inside the plane which means flux is also increasing so emf will be induced in the loop that will oppose this change in flux so if field inside the plane is increasing this current in this direction will oppose that so the emf induced will also be counterclockwise now this counterclockwise emf means this point on the loop will be at the highest potential and this point will be at the lowest potential so we are calling it as vt and zero and because of this potential difference current it will flow through the loop so now let's try to find out the specific charge so whenever something happens suddenly we need to consider impulse so that's where we will start so these electrons they will have omega r velocity and then they are going to stop and all that will happen very quickly so that's why we are talking about impulse so first equation we will write for the impulse so impulse due to induced electric field due to time varying magnetic field is equal to change in momentum of electrons see moment the electrons were traveling in this direction but now electric field is induced so that will oppose their velocity so electrons will come to rest why because of this induced electric field so impulse due to this electric field on the electron that is change in momentum of the electron so that's what we are writing impulse due to induced electric field is equal to change in momentum momentum of electrons so impulse is force into time so f dt so force on this electrons is e into et into dt is equal to minus m dv so we are considering the left term as positive so we have to make right term also positive so dv velocity is increase is decreasing so dv is negative so to make it positive we will put a minus sign here so this equation should be pretty clear now force into time is equal to change in momentum impulse is equal to change in momentum now we have got a term of et here which we want to get rid of and we are given a charge q that is passing through the galvanometer so somehow we need to relate this electric field to the charge so you can see charge is related to current and current is related to potential and potential now you can imagine is related to electric field so that's what we are going to do these four steps so imagine this the potential across this loop is electric field into distance of the loop i mean the the length of the wire so for whole wire et into l is equal to vt right and that vt is equal to it into r so we still not have got the term of q but now you can imagine with this dt and it we might get the term of q so let's see that so from 1 and 2 let's eliminate et now so when we do that we get this equation e into itr by ldt is equal to minus mdv now we have got a term of it dt and integral of that will be the charge flown through the galvanometer and on right side we get a term of dv so the electrons will come to a complete stop because of this electric field so velocity will vary from omega r to zero so we put those values here it's a simple integration 
and we get the ratio of e by m as l omega r by q r which is our answer so very nice problem we we equated we have seen impulse and electromagnetic induction in the same problem good one